Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now guys, in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can use neem oil to um, help to eliminate um, sucking insect pests on your ferns and your house plants. And I just want you to know that the only brand I've ever used is the Pink Sun. I've never used any other brand. So the recommendations I'm going to be telling you after this introduction is for this brand, um, different types of neem oil might have different dosages. As in this case, that the Pink Sun, the dosage is what is recommended on the bottle. And this is the only brand I've used. And I highly recommend that when you use neem oil, you use one that's specially for horticultural grade. As in this case, Pink Sun is safe for plants and also for your skin and if it's not good for your skin it's not going to be good for your plants <laughs> and as I say this is an organic one as well and it's thoroughly important you use a horticultural soap as well to mix it with and as I say go into a lot lot more detail after this introduction so I won't waffle on just yet here <laughs> and as I say um this is what I highly recommend um, and this is what I did. I did a video a couple of days ago on removing the ferns, um, bugs here. They had like a fern mite, which is like a little bit of a type of green fly. I think it's related to a green fly without the wings. And um, I thoroughly recommend first removing any physical insect pests from your plants first before using neem and the reason being is that neem oil does not work straight away it does take up to a month to, to thoroughly work so it's not um, a contact as such like other sprays insect sprays would be and it's a, it's a very very good preventative and although it does get rid of pests eventually you sometimes have to use it two or three times and in this case, I always recommend after you've treated your plants, repeat the application again in seven days time. And as I say, if God forbid you absolutely have a horrible infestation of pests, you're probably better off using a systemic if you have a very bad case. As in this case, this was more more them type of like mites type of thing that you get on a night thoroughly hosed them off with the, the hose pipes have removed as many as I physically could and left it for a couple of days and now I'm going to be spraying it with the um, organic neem oil so guys I'm going to be showing you how to make up a batch of neem oil and also how to spray your plants with the neem oil now when it comes to using neem oil with plants obviously um, there's different types of um, brands of neem oil so it's really important that you go for a good quality preferably organic neem oil in this case i can really really recommend pink sun they're good quality and they're proper horticultural grade and this is important because if you just go and get a bottle of neem oil from any type of shop um, a chemist or something and even even some of the health shops it might not be the type of, of quality name you want for horticultural use so in this case pink sun recommend it um, for horticultural use so it's safe to use on your plants and it's also good enough to use on your skin as well so that proves it's good quality and as i say this is pink sun and um with the neem oil, it comes in a few different sizes. And with this one here as an example, that's a 200, 250 milliliters. And this one here is the one liter. As in this case, we have a lot of plants here. <laughs> so we're going to be using the one liter. Um, but this is a 250 milliliter to show you here. And also, it's really, really important that when you use neem, that you mix it with a liquid soap. And the reason being is if you use neem oil neat, then you will damage your plants. And also if you just mix it with water, which I've seen some people recommending and then just shaking it. Well, you're going to spray oil and water don't mix. So it's not going to mix in the water. So when it comes to spraying your plants, you're just going to be spraying the neem oil straight on. And it can, you know, it can damage the plants if you're using it that way i personally have never ever ever had a problem with using neem but i've always mixed it with the with the liquid soap and i've always used either this brand here the horticultural liquid soap as i say by pink sun 
But um, when I when I haven't used that before, I've also used um, a brand of washing up liquid, believe it or not, a liquid gentle soap called Ecova. And it's fragrance free. Um, it has a very slight fragrance, actually, like a fruity fragrance, but it's very, very, very gentle. And I've never had any problems when I've used that. But I prefer to stick to the proper horticultural gentle liquid soap because that is safe to use on your plants. It's also great to use for cleaning the leaves of your plants as well. A few drops in some warm water, a little bit of a cloth, wiping over the leaves, especially um, some of the ones like the house plants. It gets the dirt off, which is great. But in this case, it's brilliant for mixing with the neem. So People who have said to me, who have had problems before, they said, oh, I hate using neem oil or I sprayed it and my plants got damaged. When I've dug further and asked them more questions, I found out they've either been using it neat or using it straight with just water or mixing it with alcohol, which is going to burn, especially in high strength, or not using the right type of quality. Now, there are certain types of plants you do have to be careful with. Um, now, I, as I say... I've used this on all of my plants in the past and I've never, ever, ever had any problems. I've used it on ferns, I've used it on all the cacti, practically every succulent. I don't tend to use it on echeverias because they do have, and most of the echeverias anyway have a bit of a, like a bit of a, a colouring over the top, like a white powder. So if, if you have succulents that have this white powder on, I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, but then again, you can, what, what you can do is dab it on, sort of put it and just go underneath if you've got bugs around the leaves, but I wouldn't just go and spray it on because it can sort of damage it. But other than that, I've never, ever had any problems. I say I've used it on my euphorbias, but a lot of people say not to use neem oil on euphorbias because it can damage them. And they also say with some calanchoes and crassulas as well. As I say, I've never had a problem when I've used it on mine, but I'm just telling you this because this is only me. Um, I would hate you to go, Go ahead and have any problems with your plants now. I've used other types of insecticides on crassulas and they've dropped all their leaves. So they're probably a little bit, and calanchoes, maybe a bit more prone than others. So when it comes to doing any plants, I would always recommend, first of all, when you're using the neem oil, to probably just treat a small area on the plant you want to do. For example, if you're doing this, this fern here, just spray a small couple of leaves Leave it for a few days. If you have no trouble and no reaction, then go ahead and treat the whole plant. The same with the collection as well. Um, I, As I say, I've never had a problem with neem. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to go straight ahead and show you what to do. But with any plant you really treasure, um, then do treat a small area first. It's a bit like when they tell you when you're colouring your hair. <laughs> treat a small area first of it, you know, just in case you end up when you, the colour you really don't want. And it's the same when it comes to treating with all plants. And I personally have found this great, as I say. And I'm just sharing with you in this video how you can treat your plants with neem oil safely i'm not going to hold any responsibility should your plants have any problems due to this because as i say i'm only sharing my experience and i think the trick is it is 100 important to mix 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 it mix it completely with the water and the soap i'm going to show you what to do and as i say i personally recommend the pink sun brand because it is good quality and with the gentle soap and the links down below um, in the about section of this video where you can purchase this neem oil from on Amazon. It's the be best value, I think, from Pinkson. They are, are links down below to the 250 milliliter bottle and the one liter bottle and also the horticultural gentle liquid soap, which you have to use with this because... It's a must, to, to, otherwise you will damage your plants if you just use it neat and mix it with just water because oil and water don't mix. <clears throat> and um, also you can get the pack together where you get the neem oil and the liquid soap together in, I think it's the 250 ml. So I'll put links down below to them, to them um, where you can buy them on Amazon. So do go ahead and that. These, this is the only neem oil I will recommend. As I say, other growers may have other types of neem oil they like. It's most important that it's good, it's, it's for horticultural use. Anyway, I have to cover that because that's the most important thing talking. As I say, any prized plants, treat a small part first and then no trouble after a few days, probably a couple of days at most, go ahead then and treat the whole collection. So let's get going guys. Now what you will need to do, is a pressure sprayer like this and preferably one that actually has measurement on. I've already pre-filled this with warm water and um, in this case I've got, a, this is a two, two um, litre bottle of, uh, and I've got one litre here because I'm just going to use one litre because I'm just going to use this on um, a small amount of plants. So that's what you need to do is have correct measurement out there. 
and um, that there. Now what you want to do is use warm water and what they recommend is, is five millilitres of pure neem oil. Now this is a little measuring um, cup, a little teaspoon here, a five millilitre one, especially from the chemist and this is better than using sort of these type of ones that you'd use to make a cup of tea with for sugar because it's flat and it's difficult to get a proper measure out of that but this is going to be good for stirring it in um, the one that's actually deep like that so you're going to get a proper measure there and as I say it actually states five milliliter on it there so that's not going to go, go anywhere it's going to hold it well and um, as I say, you can get these from most chemists and drug stores. So just pop in and usually ask the pharmacies if you can purchase a five milliliter medicine spoon. Um, this I find ideal. But some of the neem oils will actually come with the caps with the measurements in anyway. Um, so five milliliters of neem oil with 10 milliliters of horticultural soap. Now, as I say, different brands, if you're using a different brand of neem oil, it may say different measurements and the same with the soap. What you need to do is go with what it actually says on your bottle of brand rather than what I'm telling you here. But I'm only saying that this is the brand I, I would recommend and this is the measurements on this one. So, but always go with what you've got. Now, as in this case here, what you want to do is for every one litre it's five millilitres of pure neem oil with one litre of warm water with, and then 10 millilitres of horticultural grade liquid soap. So what you want to do first, now some people might say, you know, you put the neem oil in first, then you put the soap, then you put the water, mix it in. I personally prefer to put the water in first, then I like to use the soap next and then the oil, and then give it a very, very, very good stir and a shake. But you can really, as long as it's all mixed together, that's really what you need to do. It doesn't matter whether you prefer to put the oil in first, then the soap and the water. Do whatever you feel is best. Over trial and error with this, in time, I like to put the water in first. Now, in this case, it's for five milliliters with every one liter. So I have got one liter here, because that's all I need. But if you want to make less, you just, you know, you just divide it to what you need to use. Um, I'm going to be treating a few, quite a lot of plants today, so I'm going to have a big one, one litre here. But if you only needed to do a handful of plants or one plant, as I say, just use it as, as what you need, but make sure you don't use over um, what, what you recommend. And I th I'm using this because it's a good example to show. There's one litre exactly. Warm water, just lukewarm water. And then you want to do first the soap first. Obviously, give, give the actual soap in the bottle a stir. And as I say here, this is the bio soap. Taking the label off here. So it's always good that when you buy a product, make sure that it is got the label on and it's not one that um, obviously has been used before. You want to make sure that it's safe and there's no, uh, no anything kidney that can cause damage to your plants. And as I say, it's two five milliliter, tea, uh, five milliliter teaspoons per one organic. So here we go here so to show that show you in the camera. And um, so you just want to pour that in. One, two. There you go. That's that. And then you want to use the neem oil. Again, give it a good shake. Open the lid here. And as I say, it's just that I prefer to use the, um, the horticultural soap first before I use the oil. But, you know, you want to mix it up whichever you prefer. And as I say, just five millilitres of the um, organic neem oil here. And as I say, you don't necessarily have to use organic, but I think the better quality is this nice thick solution here. And just one of these, make sure that it's... Uh, then it's level and this is why I prefer to use this rather than a flat teaspoon it's easier to see the measurement tip it in there nice and thick and it has it has its own sort of unique sort of smell to it <laughs> but um, very nice and that's all you have to do there make sure it's all in and the trick then is you want to make sure that you mix it as much as possible and this is the most important thing because a lot of people who be using this just you know put the the thing on the start spraying and then you will get problems because it's so important because the 
oil and water do not mix so in this case I'm going to be giving it a real stir and then the next thing again is you want to give it a shake 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 as much as possible just here put the lid on Ooh. this is the trick guys you have to really 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 mix it and I think when a lot of people have trouble with neem oil is because they're not mixing it with the uh, with the soap or they have used soap that's scented, you know, that you'd use on your face and your hands. It's proper horticulture soap you need to use or a very, very gentle mild soap like Ecova. Um, and you'll know when it's mixed really well because this was a little bit frothy. Just show you in there. how it goes oh nice and uh, lovely and frothy as you can see that's when you know it's mixed with the oil and then um, it's all ready then to use and um, all mixed up and once it's made you've made the mixture up it's important that you use it within eight hours because obviously it's not going to keep too long but um, it's one of them the scents when you spray the plants you either like or you don't like. Personally, I love the smell, but some people don't like it. Now, with our neem oil, it's not a insecticide that is contact immediately. Um, now, it does take time. What happens, you see, it works its way um, through the plant. It does sort of a little bit systemically, but it works in a different way to normal type of systemics in the sense that you spray the, spray the plants, the bugs, what happens, the bugs actually eat the leaves, the sucking bugs, and then it affects them. Some of them will die from it, but a lot of the time, especially the, the bugs are quite resistant to a lot of insecticides, it affects their reproductive system. It sounds awful, but um, it actually over time then stops them from reproducing. And this is a great method because it only affects sucking insects that chew on your plants. So it's completely harmless to bees, completely harmless to other type of insects, even beneficial insects. Because remember, beneficial insects don't eat your plants, they only eat other insects. And um, it's, it does not hurt, hurt birds or anything like that. Now, it can be dangerous to aquatic life, you have to be careful, but I don't think you're going to be having too many fish around your plants. <laughs> so um, that's just something to, to bear in mind. It's not going to work instantly. It can take up to a month to get the effects from using neem oil. So if you've got a very bad infestation of bugs on your plants, you may have to resort to using a chemical systemic um, initially just to keep the, infect the, the infestation down. This is a very, very good preventative. Neem oil is a brilliant preventative, especially um, for things like spider mite and mealybug. And once you've treated your plants with this, you have to repeat it again seven days later. Um, just to make sure that um, you're covering all the plants again and any newly hatched insects will also get also get affected. Um, so it's always good to do it again seven days later. And as I say, because it takes a while, it works itself through the insect's um, system when they chew on, on the leaves. It's not an instant overnight thing. So just bear that in mind. Now there's two ways of using neem oil once you've made the mixture up and one is you can use it as a soil drench and the other one is to use it on the folia, the actual leaves and stems of the plant. And in this video I'm going to be showing you using it on the actual stems of the plant. And the reason being is personally myself, I haven't got any experience of using it as a soil drenched. Now I have used it once, one of my plants did have sort of fungus gnats and I sort of sprayed it on the top surface of the soil and it got rid of the fungus gnats in a couple of weeks, so I was very impressed. But I've never actually used it as a proper soil drench, as in watering it thoroughly into the soil. And although I know people who have used it and had very good results from that, um, I have not done that myself, so because of that, I cannot recommend that, obviously. I don't want to recommend something I haven't done myself. But when it comes to using it on the actual leaves and stems, I've had amazing results. So this is what I'm going to be showing you in this video. So just bear that in mind. If you're interested in using it more as a soil drench, and the plant can take it up systemically, maybe just um, do a little bit more research on that, 
But as I say, I, I haven't done that myself other than briefly when I had some fungus gnats um, and the results were good. And the measurements are exactly the same, whether you're using it for um, on the stems or whether it's a saw drench. So that's it then guys. And then I'm gonna show you how to, how to treat your plants. Now guys, once you've made the batch up, as in this case, obviously you must, as I, as I mentioned before, keep shaking, 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 shaking. It's important because oil does not mix that well. Um, it doesn't mix at all with water, but even with the soap, it's important you keep shaking it. And what you want to do is thoroughly, thoroughly wet the plant. And the good thing is about the neem oil, unlike other insecticides, is that if the um, oil, the, the spray gets into the soil, it's not gonna hurt. And in fact, as I say, many people recommend you using it as a soil drench and no problems at all in fact it can be very beneficial so you haven't got to worry about that other than the other you know normal insecticides that are chemical you think oh it's going all on the soil and the plants taking it up so as i say use a, a these water sprays i always find very great these water jet sprayers and um, in this case you want to thoroughly obviously pump it up and the trick is to thoroughly 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 soak the plant as in this case here um oh. There you go. Now, as I say, you want to make sure every single leaf is completely covered and uh, <clears throat> with ferns. It's important that you lift them all up. But as I say, you can use this with all house plants. And I just want to recommend it is very important if you've not done this before on certain house plants, is always to treat a small area first, um, a few leaves, especially if you have a very large collection, um, as <laughs> we have here, is to treat a small. Um, selection of leaves first so if, they, if it did cause any damage then you don't you're not going to harm the whole plant but as i say i've never had a problem with neem i find it very safe um, i've used other insecticides chemical ones in the past and i've had them scorch the leaves and everything now what i do need to, to mention it's very important that once you've treated them with the neem you don't put them in direct sunshine in fact probably keep them in the shade for a couple of at least a day after using it because that's often can cause a few problems then if you do use that um and you if i was to put this out now and they're fern so they don't go in a sunny spot anywhere but if you're dealing with other house plants and then you find that you put them out in the sun it can burn so please bear that in mind and as I say, the trick is to thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly soak the plant. And um, you need to repeat the application again then seven days time. And here now I'm going to go over this again. I just I don't want the video to be too long for you. I just want to show you what you have to do. And the good thing is it's good for your skin too. So unlike other insecticides, this is lovely to have on your hands. So it's really not going to hurt. Before when I'm using insecticides and you're spraying plants, it's a nightmare because, you, you, you know, even wearing gloves and everything, especially with systemic chemicals, they go into your skin. They're very bad for you, actually. Um, and as I say, I like to also use the isopropyl rubbing alcohol to physically remove as many pests as I can before using this. Um, and also, if not, the jet water spray as well. That's really neat. All you need to do is to thoroughly make sure all, all the um, parts are thoroughly wetted here. And I say it's not an overnight. So don't... You, if you use it and you find your pest still a few days later, don't panic. It's not that it's not working, it just takes its time. And that's it really, guys. That's really all you have to do. As I say, I'm going to go over this a little bit more thoroughly after the video, but just to show you what it is and what it involves. And the trick is, as I say, to make sure you completely mix the oil and the soap together and to keep shaking it. And once you've made the batch up, um, throw the rest away after eight hours because it's not... Um, it's not going to last after that. And um, then obviously keeping the plants in the shade for a day or two afterwards. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have uh, too many problems with pests and bugs. As I say, the shower is the ideal place to, to use it. Don't spray in direct sunshine. As I say, keep it out of the sun for the next day. So guys, I wanna send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power as always from ireland and until the next video guys bye bye bye